without France? Question mark. German notes on the French question. Uh, Cordially invited to send me an email. I will send you that uh, um, discourse or that lecture, which has taken the shape of a German book, uh, which has been published in 2006 after several uh, very litigating trials against the editor. Um, because it's a taboo. And I think we can no longer govern in Europe by a Franco-German condominium. This is impossible. So we have to flexibilize entries and exits. We have to flexibilize, we have to, to, to make more rigid the, the, the system of sanctioning inadequate fiscal um, policy. And we have to think about not only the redesign of the institution, but the reshaping of the members of the European Monetary Union if there should ever be a survival of the Eurozone. And um, as a matter of fact, the group is too heterogeneous today, and the current shape it will not be able to survive. And those who fight this idea, <coughs> they simply ignore reality. So let us give the idea of a single currency a second chance by changing the personnel, by um, not modifying but defending the rules, and by like to say this, bringing in some of the British virtues, which are rule of law, rule of law, and thirdly, rule of law. If the European community and the European Monetary Union has failed today, it's because um, rule of law is so much endangered within the European community as such. I know that um, uh, my uh, tribute to the British virtues may be misunderstood, as an invitation to the British nation to join uh, a small the continent. I, I run the risk of uh, um, failing to convince because it's more difficult to convince some of the British politicians to join a small the continent and to talk a member of the Salvation Army into the necessity of drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. But um, I nevertheless would like to say this, and uh, thank you very much for listening uh, this morning. So I think now we can go to a Q&A round, um, so uh, maybe we can start with them. Uh, maybe if you could uh, introduce yourself um, before you ask the question, that would be very nice. Well, thank, thank you very much, Chairman, and uh, I am Roger Helmer. I'm a British Conservative member of the European uh, Parliament, uh, and I tell you what, you are absolutely right. It would be much easier to get uh, a Salvation Army member drinking than to get me to agree to join the Euro. Nonetheless, uh, I'd like to thank Professor Kerber for, for his excellent and informative uh, presentation. Um, I don't actually agree that you can make the single currency work with or without France. And I was very struck by your reference to rigorous sanctions. I mean, it seems to me the problem is there is no credible sanction that you can apply. Because the only sanction you can apply is a financial sanction. But if you've got a country like Greece that's already broke, it doesn't help to go along and say you've got to pay a billion euros as a fine uh, for breaking the rules. And at the end of the day, whose army are you going to send to collect? Mm -hmm. you know, European member states don't pay fines, they won't pay fines, so there are no credible sanctions, there can be no credible sanctions. But can I follow through your idea that Portugal should leave? Now, I agree with you, but I think the only long-term solution would be for Portugal to leave. But if you think through the implications of that, the new Portuguese currency would devalue. Portuguese international debt expressed in their own currency would increase massively. They can't pay it at the moment. They certainly won't be able to pay it then. So your solution, although I agree with you, implies uh, a very radical default, let's be honest, before it restructuring, but it's default. That will have implications for many of the major banks across Europe. Um, and I think the fears of those who manage the euro currency is that such a move uh, would actually threaten the viability of the major European banks and could still bring down the euro eventually, even though countries like Portugal and Greece perhaps, and Ireland perhaps, mm -hmm. might have left. Mm -hmm. Should I questions or should you... Should I think it's better to... To, to, to direct, yes. Um, um, well, um, I, I, 
I'm, I'm very flattered by your remarks, although you disagree about uh, um, my invitation, not only to join um, uh, the Monterey Union, but to, to be more active, but your presence here is a testimony of a British presence, British virtues, and I'm happy to see you here. So, what you say about the sanctions is very, very correct. If sanctions, whatever they are, intervene too late, they are redundant because they are become absurd. How can we find Greece, which is on, was on the verge of bankruptcy? So, if sanctions have a sense, a purpose, they have to apply as soon as possible. When there is a, a, a suspicion or a, a substantiated suspicion of failing fiscal policy, these sanctions should not be only um, uh, financial sanctions, but um, losing voting rights, um, losing uh, the privilege of being fueled through the regional policy and structural policy. So, making countries feel the pinch of sanctions um, uh, does, not, uh, does not exclude measures which are for the time being totally taboo. Yeah? So, I think a country which is a free rider is losing its uh, voting rights, at least for certain period of time. A country being a, a conscious free rider, cashing in the fund money or the regional policy money and uh, uh, using the benefits of the youth for conducting the policy which has put almost all the European Monetary Union at peril, is a country which can no longer fuel it in the same way. I would even question whether the, the cause of, of Greek failure is not only the lack of monitoring by the European Commission, but the lack of monitoring, the fueling the subsidizing, um, because the money went to structures which are totally intransferable. And I would like to remind you of the fact that um, uh, Greece was the only country where the European Commission did not advocate membership. Uh, and they, they did it quite consciously because they would not know uh, how to channel the money and how to monitor, it, monitor the, the spending of, of the European funds. So, so far for the, for the sanctions. So I'm far more radical and far more creative in that field, as you might think, uh, and, and uh, very market-minded, very market-minded. Um, France, um, well, you might, uh, in a very unemotional way, as you do, with a great understatement, and I appreciate it, say it's impossible because the French economy is too big. Uh, how big the French economy is, the political oligarchy governing France is um, not abiding by any rule. They don't abide by their constitution, they don't abide by international contracts, they do what they want to do. And uh, a country which always says France comes first, and where the president after the, the, its, its election uh, invites himself to Ecofin, although he has no place there, saying that, uh, well, the consolidation of uh, public finance in France um, needs an exception treatment, he continues to show that France always wants an exception treatment. And the set, the mindset of the European community is a rule is applicable to all. There is nobody more sovereign than others. So, um, I consider France as a uh, political challenge, to put it in a very uh, understatement. Uh, and um, this political challenge has not been mastered by the German politics because German politics don't want to recognize France as what it is and what she is. Uh, they have wishful thinking and most of the German politicians have no real inside knowledge of French policy. Um, apparently, I know what I'm talking about because I went to French government school. Um, Portugal, debt, um, a striking question, an upsetting question, because as you quite rightly say, nominally the ancient debt or the, the, the past debt uh, is denominated in, in Europe. If they devaluate, they will have to serve debt. Now, so there is no clear cut possible, or there is no uh, restart possible without default and without rescheduling, or at least without restructuring debt. So that's why I would have preferred in the Greek case to say, here you are, have some money, 
This is for your devaluation costs, or the costs entailed by devaluation and by serving a past debt. And then, now let us in peace, leave us in peace. So this was a singular case. The community missed the chance to set an example, to accept the danger of a banking earthquake, which would have lasted a couple of months, but then it would have been over, and we would have disappointed the markets. We would have made a clear signal to the markets, given a clear signal to the markets, we will not um, stray away from the virtue of the no bailout clause. And uh, we did the contrary, because uh, politics seems to be, uh, seems to, to have a lack of courage. So I have, I clearly can see, uh, and my studies of the Argentinian crisis, uh, which I will send you, of course, uh, um, um, prove the necessity to have a clear scenario for default, which will be a Stay mate. Yeah? It will be a nice time for tough people. Yeah? Thank you for your question. Thank you. Um. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. My name is Dirk Hennepping. I'm Dutch. I've been elected in Belgium, so I'm a real European, and I belong to the Conservative group together with Mr. Helmer. Um, I've got one question about, about your point stating the legality of the bailout fund. You say that, correctly, the treaty 